Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we are back for another brand new video and it is a brand new video ladies and gentlemen but the subject matter is something we're coming very very accustomed to having especially on Derby Day, it's now 7 consecutive times we've sat here and been very very happy when that full time whistle has went and you know Sonny, you look at this game especially coming into it right, the final score was Rangers 1, Celtic 0 but in this game of football there were 7 players out, there was no captain, there was no manager, there was no right back, there was no number one goalie, no number two goalie, there was no defenders on the bench, but I'll tell you something right now, ladies and gentlemen, it was still no problem. And you know, so I'm just sitting here absolutely buzzing and I'm laughing and I'm smiling, I'm seeing all these excuses online, there's so much in the ticker, the plump bags are in overdrive, it feels like Floyd Mayweather sitting doing that to them ladies and gentlemen because we've had to sit and listen to all this noise and the build up to this game. This was the all conquering Julius Caesar 2.0. This Celtic team was supposed to come to Ibrox. They were supposed to see, they were supposed to conquer but they left with what they deserved and that was absolutely nothing because once again this Rangers team shows that when it's 1v1 head to head they just want it more and they are better. Doubt it, deny it if you want, coddle yourself in that Ivory Coast denial blanket if you will. But the facts are there, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, Rangers reminded everyone. And you know, son, some of the frustrations that we've had so far this season was completely wiped away, and we all knew there was a performance in there. We knew there'd be one game that turns it all around that would click, and we would show what we're all about. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. You saw it with the reaction of the players. You saw it after the game. You saw everything you want. That's it now. That is the match being lit for this Rangers side. And now we go into an international break. Now we get the players back. Now we get seven players back in total with the COVID stuff, and that will be over. We will be going back into this at the end of the international break, fully sharp, fully ready, with no other disruptions, and that right there just gets me gone. Speaking of getting me gone, by the way, if I can be a little bit cheap before we dive into this reaction, if you didn't mind helping the old channel out by joining the channel, we're trying to reach 56k, we're trying to reach 56 titles, so if you can help us out to bridge that gap so it happens at the same time, that'd be greatly greatly appreciate. But right to the old football things we go and starting in to the match when we saw the team sheet there was a little bit of okay this is a bit unusual because not only did the players miss the game like Tavernier, McLaughlin, McGregor, Scott Wright, Calvin Bassey, Ryan Jack etc 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 not only did these players miss this upcoming game but so did Nathan Parson he was a right back he was going to be the one in this game of football that takes the pressure on missing the guy that's name is Tavernier, the guy that has been so influential in these games over the world. But he was out as well as he is also now self-isolating. So that meant that we would move our other centre-back, Leon Balligan, out to the right hand side and if you think back to the last couple of appearances he's been subbed off twice at half time when playing right back once in European football and once obviously last season in an old form and there was a little bit worried there because not only do you have that doubt but you also have Barisic who has been struggling all season long and I'll tell you something right now the plump bag shriveled a little bit when I saw the starting 11 because we just knew it was about who wants it in here and who's willing to give more. But ladies and gentlemen, before we go any further on with today's video, that is all I need today about big Leon Balligan. Everything you could ever ask for that man in that game, he gave us. But trust me, you're going to hear the name Balligan a lot in today's video. So let's get into the first chance of the match. And it actually came from a Rangers perspective where it was again positive, high on the ball, good intensity, the ball goes out to the left hand side and it meets Barisic and his cross is disappointing, I don't think he hits it but it actually bounces a little bit back, Cal McGregor swipes it, it goes up in the air and Morelos' snapshot volley is actually a lot closer than I originally thought when I was seeing the game, that was a good positive start from Rangers and it sort of set the tone in the opening 10 minutes. Now Celtic did respond about the 8th minute in the game where they got down the left hand side of Barisic with Ralston who we've heard so much about getting talked up he should be playing for Scotland. He's the best right back in the country, is he? Oh my god I feel bad for the country because in the ninth minute he's played with so much space down the right hand side he has 5 players to aim at but his cross goes out all the way. I didn't even think it bounces until it's actually out for our throw in for Rangers. That was a massive opportunity that was wasted by the best right back 
in the old country. But as it has been about 10, 15 seconds since we mentioned Balogun, let's go ahead and speak on because in the 10th minute he showed that he was really up for this game after Edward brings the ball down. Balogun just comes out of nowhere and absolutely nails him and from the resultant slide challenge actually goes all the way over to Ryan Kent who was able to recover from his hamstring injury. We can kind of see that he's not at 100% but full credit to that lad. There was no way he was missing it. He's got that mad golf strength ladies and gentlemen and that's generally the only thing I think got him through that match but he brings the ball down he skips by one he finds Morelos and eventually goes out for a corner that unfortunately the delivery was very very disappointing at that point. So that caps the opening 10 minutes and if I'm honest with you the next 10 did kind of go Celtic's way and a lot of that was just down to their possession and the football Callum McGregor dropping for it. Sort of aimless possession, something that we get annoyed at as well. A lot of side by side, side by side because yes Celtic won the possession battle but did they really anything with it overall in the match? I mean the best chance that they created was in the 24th minute where yes we're going to speak about it because it's actually a very sharp counter attack. The ball gets played down the left hand side. One of the few times that Balogun was forward, him and Joe Rebo actually get a mix up in communication. That leaves Balogun going forward. Kyogo goes with space, he picks out Edward for a tap in, 24th minute, bit big Edward hits it wide, I know ladies and gentlemen how sensational that player was supposed to be when he was scoring goals for fun versus the defence that we had at that time. He's not scored many since we've actually strengthened the defence and actually got good Rangers players, eh? Weird that. But I true story, ladies and gentlemen, when that ball was coming over, I actually sneezed at the exact time as it went to Edward. So I'm not trying to take credit, I'm not trying to say that my sneeze put Edward off. But what I am saying is, there's no way to prove that I didn't put him off with that sneeze. You're welcome. <laughs> Wait, what's that? Oh, it's Balogun o'clock again, ladies and gentlemen, because just two minutes after that major opportunity for Celtic, the ball very unluckily drops down to Kyogo in the middle of the box, and who's there? Right place at the right time. It's the right back, and he's there with a beautiful slide challenge block. Eventually does, I think, clip his shoulder or something like that, but it's never ever a penalty. In fact, it's a phenomenal slide challenge by Balogun, who's in the right place at the right time. Again, that, sh for me, should have been one of the centre-halves, but it's Balogun who read it all the way, followed his man inside, and showed his defensive instincts and that was massive in the game. And that kind of frantic nature continued in the game of football where it was like one or two passes away from being a major opportunity for both sides. It was either a well-timed challenge or an overhead pass. It was stuff like that. But in the 31st minute came the biggest opportunity or the biggest maybe in the game so far for Rangers as Joe Rebo does so well down the right hand side. He flicks it on to our boy Kamar Roof and Roof charges at the defence, he then whips a ball to the back post, trying to find Morelos, it's just slightly over hit, but Morelos just manhandles and pushes Welsh out the way like he's a little kid at the swings, ladies and gentlemen, just shoves him right away like he doesn't even belong on the same surface as the man, and he eventually picks out Ryan Kent, edge of the box, Kent opens the body up, goes for a wee curler, a wee cheeky finesse, but unfortunately, it clips the post and goes wide, but that's as close as it came in the first half for Rangers. But as we said, that was the last opportunity in the first half for Rangers, but the game was still going on, it was still going back and forth, it was still a battle, but the battle was being won by Balogun. Every single time Kyogo touched that ball on that left-hand side, Balogun was there with a header, slide challenge, just pushing it away, manhandling him. Honestly, it got to the stage, I started to wonder if Leon Balogun had his hand up Kyogo's arse, working his move like a puppet. It was frightening the performance that Balogun went in there and that led us just to the last action before the half and it was kind of a long clearance ball in behind it, really unluckily hits off Connor Goldson's shin but Edward is there, he reads it, he's running in to the box but Hollander shows what an actual real Swedish centre-back is all about. He just walks up to Edward, takes the ball off him and that's it for half time. And I'll be honest with you, my half time thoughts, despite it being nil nil, blah 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 and all the stuff we've heard, I wasn't overly concerned about Celtic in this game. For me, their signings and everything they talked up, I wasn't impressed at all. I mean, I looked at that Starfell and for me, the money that was spent on that laddie should be a criminal offence and it should be investigated because Celtic were robbed for that laddie. So rash, Disney track his runners, or the shop defensively and Abada who we heard so much about coming in to this game for having a fantastic game versus this team, fantastic game versus this team. For me, I sat back and went, you know what, he's just a James Forrest that runs normally and just Disney affect the game. And despite Kyogo being a very talented player and having moments in the second half, again Balogun was bodying him so much, he was an irrelevance in the first half. So you go into the second half and you're thinking the exact same thing, I think we all were, we need to put pressure 
on this team because the moments we did it in the first half, they couldn't handle it. They were kicking the ball. Joe Hart was spilling the ball to the sides. They were looking very uncomfortable. As soon as you took that one pass to McGregor away from Celtic, it was like all the dominoes just crumbled. It was like Jenga falling out. They couldn't handle it. So we wanted to see more of that. And we wanted to see more aggression. Thankfully, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what happened. Almost like that. It was a completely different second half where you could definitely say the first half was balanced and mixed. But the second half was the Ranger show for the majority of it. I mean, the first 15 seconds of the second half told you it was going to be different. We took one pass, we hit it long, we won a free kick, and we started to ask some questions. And you know something? The game really started to change for me over the space of 10 minutes. And it really changed for Barisic, who up to this point, I'll be honest with you, was bad with the ball at his feet. He was okay defensively, he was getting involved in things, but he's putting himself in positions and wasting every single set-piece delivery or chance to put the ball in the mixer. But the game changed over three moments in the second half, in my personal opinion. The first one being, there was a wee moment down the left-hand side for Celtic where Kyogo actually gets tries to take on Conor Golson. Conor Golson takes him out, wins the ball cleanly, and Kyogo's wanting a foul, but Golson just goes right to him and he's just screaming at him, staring right at him, get up! Get up, get up. The difference in intensity and aggression, there was no respect given from Rangers to Celtic in the second half, and that's the way it should be. That was one moment where I went, all right, there's a different mentality. The next moment in the game that changed for me was in the 56th minute where Barisic goes out there and he actually connects with one of his corners. He actually reaches corner, Goldson at the back post, and unfortunately Goldson kind of get it on target, but that was a wee moment for Barisic. He seemed to get a wee bit of confidence back because that's the delivery we know he's capable of. And then just a couple minutes later, he's standing over a free kick, and Conor Goldson actually runs at him, and he's like, kind of hitting him, like here. He's like, he's kind of jeering him up, telling him. He must be screaming like, you're the best crosser in this league. Remember it. Day hangs in. Eventually from that set piece, it comes the corner in the 65th minute and Barisic is feeling it. He's jeering up and as he walks to the Rangers fans to put that ball down, despite having a very, very mixed performance so far, he turns round to the fans and he tells them to get on their feet. He asks them to rise to the occasion and what that man does as every fan in that corner gets to their feet and gives them what they can give them, he then supplies with what he can give all us and that is an inch perfect corner right to the back post that Holanda meets perfectly and it's buried into the back of net ladies and gentlemen making him not only best Swedish centre back on the park but he goes ahead and shows us and now makes himself the best Swedish player to ever score in an old firm. Incredible header but the cross and just the fear of it all for a guy that was struggling to just get jeered up, ask the crowd to give him it, the crowd gives him it back and he delivers. That right there is storybook and I absolutely love every bit of that goal. Now as you can imagine that just set the place on fire. Honestly it was bouncing that much at the camera footage, everything like the Rangers fans were absolutely electrifying and shout out to every single one of them that made that atmosphere as memorable because they genuinely the entire place was bouncing. But ladies and gentlemen it's got to be said with less than a minute after we scored, Celtic had their biggest opportunity since Edward missed where Kyogo actually goes in to the centre because we, Edward, he jogged off the park again, again being useless when there's actual defenders there. He went off the park, Kyogo came on and he went central and right away, it's a brilliant long through ball by Callum McGregor. It bounces in between the centre halves and he's 1v1 with the goalkeeper but who reads it so well and who's there and positions himself perfectly, Robbie freaking McCrory and that was the moment and that was the McCrory moment that I was wanting to see in that game because that is just concentration, composure. Doesn't matter what age you are, ladies and gentlemen. He reads that absolutely perfectly and that was huge in the game because that would have really changed everything if they were able to score as quickly as that and kill that atmosphere that was absolutely rocking. So shout out to McCrory. That was his first moment in the game and his first moment in a Ranger shirt, but it certainly one of his last. But I back to the game recap. For me, over the next 10 minutes, it really became the Glenn Kamara show because I felt the more Celtic put pressure on Rangers, the better Glenn Kamara actually came because he can show you what he's all about. He's just clever and he's just better and he's just more technical than everyone else on the park. Genuinely, there was two players on him at one point. He spun them both and just galloped by them like he was riding Sea Biscuit, ladies and gentlemen. Genuinely, this man could find space in a phone box if he was sharing it with Neil Lennon. Frightening player. Nobody could get near him and he was vital for us holding the ball and moving it 
during this period. But despite Kamara sparkling and just looking absolutely unbelievable, there's still that tension because it is only 1-0, ladies and gentlemen, but it was so nearly 2-0. And you talk about the luck gone against you um, really quickly after gone for you. I mean, there was a build-up play where Ryan Cape brings the ball down beautifully, tries to flick the ball out to Morelos. It hits off the Celtic defender. It loops over. It looks like it's going to fall to Alfredo Morelos inside the box. You're thinking, right, there's a bit of luck we've been waiting for all weekend. But we're sharply reminded that sometimes it just does not go for you as Alfredo Morelos just falls over and slips, ladies and gentlemen, when when he's in on goal and if you go back and you look at it, he's actually got his shoe untied because he's hurt himself he's just about to come off the park I mean if he had these wee laces tied he probably gets a goal there but aye he falls in the 82nd minute when he should have been in and that is how close it came for Alfredo and after that ball goes out he does come off the park but for me I thought he was absolutely excellent in the game no goal this time but winning three kicks holding the ball bringing others into play shout out to Morelos he was massive in this game. But we mentioned a McCrory moment earlier in the game and Kyogo who is a very talented player at getting beyond people, his movement like we talked about in yesterday's preview video is absolutely spot on and he is very talented. He started getting through balls in behind and I think it was sort of a mixture of how many people Celtic were actually piling forward that did create him a little bit more space but he gets in behind in the 86th minute. He drives it right across the goalkeeper. Very similar to the Malmo goal where Kovac, Ko Kolak sorry, was able to get it beyond Alan McGregor but she Shout out to Robin McCrory, keeping the heat again despite it, late in the old form, nippy bum time if you want. He's absolutely spot on positionally and he's there with a fantastic save with his foot. That's superb for McCrory and that's his second moment in the old game. But again it's time to talk about Leon Balogun, ladies and gentlemen, because just 60 seconds after that phenomenal save, which probably should have been the wake up call to the back line, but again Celtic's just piling so many people forward, they're creating spaces in the rain. Wait, it was once again comes down, the side Kyogo beats the offside trap, he's down, he's there, McCrory's coming out, he actually passes it into the inside, which should be a tap, and I think it's for Christie or something like that, I don't know what player it was, it looked like it was going to get the end of of it, but who's there at the right place at the right time again? Leon Balogun, ladies and gentlemen, he just sniffs out the danger despite him playing right back. He's actually in the right place in the centre of the goal with well, a phenomenal slide challenge, and that well and truly underlined his man of the match performance for me. You can honestly click and tick whatever you want, what you wanted from him in this game. He gave it and more, ladies and gentlemen. And his performance was summed up in that exact moment because we should have probably conceded that Kyogo's done the right thing. There's men there. But Balogun just reads it so quickly. Go back and watch it. Sensational defending. But there's one last thing I want to talk about from the game and I've not even mentioned his name so far. And to be fair, it wasn't his best overall performance. But in the 93rd minute, who intercepts it and runs 40 yards with the football? Stephen Davis, and you're trying to tell me that that man's 36 years old. He skips by Callum McGregor, runs by, finds Sakala, and Sakala's shot is well saved by Joe Hart. But that, for me, is all Stephen Davis, and that's the last thing we need to talk about in the game of football. There was one sour moment where Balogun actually has cramp, he goes down, we, kick, we throw the ball out, kind of similar, to, uh, right next to our corner flag. Now we're expecting Celtic to give us it back, but they didn't. They ended up winning a corner, but thankfully we defended it spectacularly, ladies and gentlemen. And that full-time whistle went with three points, clean sheet, and job done from the champions. The last thing we, of course, need to discuss is there were a couple of questions about Barisic after the game. He was very emotional. He went down and kneeled. He touched the ground, and he was kind of teary-eyed and everything like that. Some people are saying, is this his last game for Rangers, or is he just emotional because... He created that moment because he's went through a hard time over the last five, six weeks where he hasn't been playing well, but he was back for that moment and he created it. So it could be either one, ladies and gentlemen, but if this is the last time we see Barisic in a Ranger shot, I just want to say thank you so much, big man. You had no right to give what you gave in that game if there is a move lined up or anything like that. You took your blows, you took your lows and you bounced back every single time and you once again delivered a moment that will be cherished a long, long time by Rangers fans and set us on a way bit. Any more updates about Barisic or anything like that, I will let you know down in the comment section or make it in a future video. But that's me out of here, ladies and gentlemen, for the seventh time now. We're happy on Derby Day. Glasgow's blue. The champions are the champions and we silence them again. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Cedron over round two. That has been Rocket Boy Johnson. Take care of yourselves. All the best and bye-bye.